I got a neighbor, and right now he's puking blood because he works right there in the main part of it. People are going back to work because they have to. They need that money. Not like these big boys in North Fork. They're sitting behind a desk or sitting at home, kicked back in their chair, enjoying themselves. Because they got money coming in. Do they care about us? No, they don't even care about their own employees. Sometimes a disaster is so overwhelming that it shocks people out of their political corners and brings really big problems into focus. That's what it's like in East Palestine. I grew up in this county. I live two counties south on Route 7. The last time I was in East Palestine was for the Sweethearts Dance in 2007. I came back to find out what happened when a nearly two-mile-long Norfolk Southern train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed and was detonated in spectacular fashion on the edge of town. We've been here for over a week. We've seen national figures and camera crews come and go, but what gets lost in so much of that coverage is that the people here still have a ton of unanswered questions. How safe is the air and water, really? Who, if anyone, has the juice to square up with a $55 billion company that treats disasters as the cost of doing business? And will anyone step up to lead this time? Do I have to wait until I have cancer or my kids are sick before you guys are going to do anything? Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Um, Can I do an interview? Yeah, yeah, I'll do one. My name is Luke Glavin. I live a couple blocks from here on Alice Street. Uh, we're in East Palestine, pretty much right ground zero for where the train derailed. Friday night, my wife and I were playing Call of Duty, and uh, we heard some banging around, and we didn't know what the heck it was, so we paused it. You know, we come out here, and it was a spectacle, really. But I kept telling my wife, oh, my God, this is, this is big. This is bigger than we're going to even ever imagine. The train derailed on the edge of town late at night on February 3rd. Five cars were carrying toxic vinyl chloride. Left alone, the damaged cars would have gone off like a bomb. So officials on the scene did what's being called a controlled release. A mushroom cloud of toxic chemicals filled the sky, stretching out for miles. It was like hundreds of miles, like that shit was out there. And I was just silent for a moment. That feeling, you know, when people are gonna suffer or, or you know, something's horribly wrong with this. Two days later, government and company-sponsored tests declared the air and water safe, and a mandatory evacuation order for residents in a one-mile radius of the derailment was lifted. Minutes later, the trains were back on the tracks. And in the days and weeks since, residents have gotten very few answers to their many questions. So Luke, walk us through what communication has been like of really important information after this derailment. I'm gonna give you the shortest answer possible. There isn't any. I mean, really, uh, from Norfolk anyways. You're a, a multi-billion dollar corporation, and they can't even give you the answers to some simple questions that even a little bit of research on Google can give you. They're not talking, they're trying to protect themselves, so. Yeah. I mean, but they need to at least let us know what's going on, you know. Norfolk Southern has been carrying out most of the major operations since the disaster, hiring contractors for the cleanup, the testing, everything. When they did the test, I was actually crying as the team walked through my house because I said, there's no way in hell I'm the only one smelling this right now. I noticed the smell right away. I can smell a cleaner smell. They said they didn't smell anything <laughs> at all. So you've had a test at your home. Who did that test? That was CTEC. Um, that was the Center for Toxicology and Environmental Health, the company that uh, Norfolk contracted with. It turns out the initial testing used to justify the claim that East Palestine's water supply was secure was conducted by a third-party contractor hired by Norfolk Southern in a way that didn't comply with the EPA's own testing standards. It begs the question of why the company that caused this disaster was ever charged with handling the response in the first place. Why the fuck would you let Norfolk do that? Like, why would you let them clean up their own mess? They have every reason to just cover it up. This is what the only thing that I've received from Norfolk so far. This is just a little pamphlet um, just telling us about what they've done. 3,150 cubic yards of contaminated soil and 942,000 gallons of contaminated water. And that's been the narrative since this started was, guys, it's okay, you know, we've got this, we're cleaning it up. We've made a lot of progress on environmental remediation. We've dug up 4,600 cubic yards of soil 
and collected 1.7 million gallons of water. We got the wildlife officers out there every day checking our creeks. Everything's dead, nothing comes around. We used to have birds, we used to have all kinds of stuff. Is it the water that's bothering her, or is it something else? She's not manufacturing, she's sick. I've had her at the emergency room three times. I'm being exposed to something in my house. The doctor diagnosed me with contact dermatitis due to chemical exposure. I try to walk like three feet into my house. I start um, feeling like I'm literally about to black out. We're not dumb. They, they think they can just throw a bunch of science words around and then just expect us not to question it. I just really like to know what exactly they're doing. doing. <laughs> Great, At this point, yeah. I'm more folk personally, um, I'd like to know why people are getting sick with CBC symptoms and why they're just not taking that seriously. I mean, they match the symptoms identically, and they're just still like, oh, those are unrelated. So we are in the press box of the East Palestine High School Auditorium, the last of a three-day event with national political figures coming through here, the first being Trump, the second being Pete Buttigieg, and now Aaron Brockovich. I can't tell you how many communities feel that these moments are the biggest gaslight of their life because you experienced it. You have symptoms, but you're going to be told it's safe. You're going to be told not to worry. Well, that's just rubbish. This is all happening as the Environmental Protection Agency takes over the next phase of the cleanup process. In practice, that means that Norfolk is still leading the day-to-day -day operations, while the EPA monitors their progress. But the EPA plans to use its powers to force Norfolk to foot the entire bill for the cleanup. And if the company fails to finish the job, the EPA will do it themselves and invoice Norfolk for three times the original cost. I want you all to know that we are holding Norfolk Southern accountable for putting this community in harm's way. The EPA has a spotty track record of showing up, rushing to say everything's fine, then leaving people without the support they really need. We saw it in Flint, and we're already seeing some signs that it might be happening here. Recently, the EPA said that their own testing shared that the air and water near the crash was completely safe. But Texas A&M researchers, using the same data, found elevated levels of nine pollutants that could be linked to serious long-term health risks. For residents, all of this can feel like a repeat of how Norfolk Southern has been handling the response in the last few weeks. The fact that they gave Norfolk that entire responsibility was just beyond me. I just don't know. I hope the EPA can make it right, but I did talk to several federal EPA people already that didn't know. They just didn't know. Which I think they should have just been blatantly honest with us, you know? They should have just come right out in the beginning and said, hey man, this could be a while. You know, hold on because you don't know what's going to happen. And that's the uncomfortable truth. No one really knows what the long-term health effects of all of this will be. When you burn uh, vinyl chloride, it forms dioxins, which are itself their own um, very hazardous form of chemical and are very, very persistent over long periods of time. That's Emily Jeffers. She's a senior attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity. We asked her about the EPA stepping in and what they can realistically promise residents. What are the full costs and how long will it take us to know what they really are? That's a good question because no one knows. It's going to be years and years and years before we really understand the full costs. A lot of these cancers don't manifest themselves right away, so the harms that folks might see is not going to be readily apparent. The best case scenario is that Norfolk Southern pays a ton of money to these folks. They owe us property value. They owe us our health. They owe us five, ten years from now when things are going on. I just don't know how these people can't have any type of, like, sympathy. Bust out the checkbook, man, and start paying people to clean this shit up the right way. East Palestine residents have already taken it upon themselves to file multiple lawsuits against the company. But Norfolk Southern is counting on the cost of this cleanup to barely impact their bottom line. The thing is, they actually plan for catastrophes like this. And if they're lucky, they can even profit from them. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, we have a train derailment in Graniteville. Train derailment? Yes, ma'am. It's something blowing off all over the town down here. In 2005, Norfolk Southern fought accountability for a similar disaster that they caused in South Carolina, which killed nine people and led to the hospitalization of over 500. The company was ultimately forced to pay $4 million in fines to the federal government and over $10 million in settlements, a far cry from what was needed to cover the actual harm inflicted on that community. 
But now, investors on Wall Street are pointing to this example as a reason why Norfolk Southern's value is unlikely to be impacted by the disaster in East Palestine, and why now might actually be a great time to buy Norfolk Southern stock. It's important to remember, this isn't some huge conspiracy. For companies like Norfolk Southern, destroying an entire town like this is just the cost of doing business. This a company town? that's owned yes. by J.P. Morgan, Vanguard, well, and BlackRock. Let's not. Rock, Alan yeah. Shaw's a pawn. So, so he's a pawn. He makes eight million dollars a year. Yeah. Eight million dollars a year. He lives in an eight thousand foot square mansion. Okay. He doesn't care about the people. I'm angry. I'm angry about this. I've lived in East Palestine for sixty-five years now. That's my home. I, I don't feel safe in this town now. You took it away from me. You took us away from this. To you, look me in the eye. I can't hit you with my pocketbook. I can't touch you with anything other than my heart. And listen to me, please. My grandchildren, my children want out. It's not safe here, sir. We're sick. You breathe. You are no different than any other man. I want Thank to be as close you. to you as I can, sir. If you want our trust, I am begging you. By the grace of God, please get our people out of here. Yes. This area, the one that I grew up in, has been dealing with polluting industry for a long time. There's a picture from 1981 of a person in a hazmat costume protesting the construction of the nation's largest hazardous waste incinerator. That person is my mom, and the incinerator is just down the road from where the train derailed in East Palestine. Contaminants from this disaster are being burned off there right now. Heavy polluters have always been in Columbiana County, and for the longest time, it felt almost impossible to speak out against them. This time feels different. I think it brought uh, attention to a lot of people, especially in like sleepy little East Palestine, that never really questioned a lot of things that like big things like that. Because I mean, that's that's a it is a big thing. You think politics don't involve you until they directly involve you. The Norfolk Southern disaster was big enough to shock people out of their political corners and raise questions about how business is done. How do you measure profits and stock prices against the value of people's lives, against clean air or clean water and soil? Can politicians really take money from corporations and be expected to hold them accountable? And who is the government for, anyway? And it, I just feel like we're screaming into the void. It really, really, truly does. I wish it wasn't up to us to have to do everything ourselves. Like, I mean, I... Uh, <laughs> I just want to go back to like a normal life and do the stuff I want to do, like not just try to figure out how to like av avoid this like chemical apocalypse right now. We might not have the Palestine that everybody wants, but I think it's definitely a possibility for us to at least be safe somewhere with everybody's voice and a continuous cry from the community. It's not too late. It takes a lot to go toe to toe with a $55 billion company and I think that company is counting on people uh, to return back to normal and to not speak up about it and kind of let whatever happens to their town happen to their town. But those people are clearly set on uh, taking a different path. And I wish them all the luck in the world, which they will need. Norfolk Southern can get that.